Hello everyone and welcome to another video by China Admissions and today we're going to be going over the most common mistakes that students make when applying to universities. So number one is ignoring the application deadlines. This is such a really big um, mistake that students make and this is because there are so many different deadlines and I think a lot of students also depending on which part of the world you come from might think that the deadlines meet, might be much later than they actually are. So most of the programs will be starting in September and if you are applying for the September intake the majority of programs will have a deadline in May, end of May, so May 15th, May 30th and then we have some more that are at the end of June and then we have more that are at the end of July and then after that there's not really a lot of programs left over that you can apply for. Keep in mind if, if you're applying for programs like at Fudan or at Tsinghua, a lot of their programs actually have multiple deadlines that you have to go through multiple rounds of application and their deadlines are generally much earlier, so in February or March or April. So please check the specific deadline. We have them on our website. You can also double check them on the university website. Um, and please make sure to apply well in advance, even though the deadline might be several months from now, we do recommend just if you have all your documents, just apply as soon as possible. This gives you also the best chance of getting accepted as there's less competition as well. So be, do be sure to apply as soon as possible and do try to find out um, how long it's going to take to get your documents. A lot of people need to do medical examinations, get police clearances, get recommendation letters. And especially when it comes to things like applying for passports and police clearances, it might take a couple of months to actually get all of your documents sorted out and translated into the correct language. So please make sure to apply well in advance. The next big mistake is neglecting your language proficiency. So there are two different routes that you need to think about. If you are going to study your program in English, then you need to have the adequate English proficiency certificate. And if you're going to study in Chinese, you need to have the adequate Chinese language proficiency certificate. So you're either for the English, you will need IELTS or TOEFL, a valid IELTS or TOEFL. So they can't be older than two years and they have to be over um, a very certain point. This depends on the program. We do have it on our website. On each program, it will state the level that you need to get in those tests. And then, um, or some universities, but not many, will accept the Duolingo English test, but just check because uh, not a lot of universities accept it. So that is something that you need to be sure of before submitting that. Um, or if you have completed your previous education in English, you can just get a letter from your previous university or school stating that your education was taught in English, and that will be completely fine as well. If you are from one of the seven English speaking countries that are recognized as English speaking by China, the United States, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and South Africa, then you do not need to get the English language certificate. If you are applying for the Chinese taught programs, you need to have the valid HSK certificate and the amount of points as well. So um, you need to usually have an HSK 5 certificate and have over 200 out of 300 points for this uh, test in order to be accepted at the university. Um, it also needs to be done within two years because if it's over two years old, it is no longer valid. If you are missing any of the required documents, like a requirement letter or a proficiency uh, certificate, we cannot help you apply to the university. It is a must in order to submit your application. The next big mistake is to overlook your scholarship opportunities. So um, when people are looking for information about scholarships online, oftentimes it can feel a bit daunting as there's a lot of information and a lot of conflicting information as well. We have a lot of information on our YouTube channel, so please just check out our previous videos that we've done regarding this. Um, also keep in mind that we don't help students that are solely scholarship students. We don't help apply for scholarships. Um, we can give you some advice on scholarships, but we don't help you apply for scholarships. Um, so just keep that in mind when you are applying um, and also just check out uh, the different types of scholarships that you might be eligible for and also keep in mind what, what you might not be eligible for. For example, the CSC scholarship, which is very famous. I think a lot of people that are interested in scholarships know about it. 
Um, it is a fully funded scholarship by the Chinese government. However, it doesn't cover any English taught bachelor's programs. It doesn't cover any medical programs and it doesn't cover MBA programs. So just keep that in mind when you're applying for it. The next big mistake is failing to research program requirements. One of the biggest issues that we have is that people think that the academic requirements aren't very strict. They are. Um, if you, for example, have a really low GPA, if you have a, under a 3.0 out of 4 GPA, unfortunately, you will probably not get accepted into a program. That's why we don't recommend that you apply if you have a lower than 3.0 GPA or um, lower than 70% on average um, for your uh, previous education. So just keep that in mind. If you have lower than that, we don't really recommend that you apply, especially for very difficult programs like MBBS or engineering. It's going to be really, really difficult for you to get accepted. Um, and this is the one of the main factors that they're going to be considering when you apply. They're not really going to be looking at anything else. They're mostly going to look at your academic requirements. If your um, grades are quite low, and you're applying for a bachelor's, we will recommend that you apply for a foundation program first. This gives you the opportunity to then rewrite um, your science subjects and your math subjects and your English as well. Um, and it gives you the chance to study hard and get higher grades and be able to apply for a bachelor's program after that. Um, any of your other requirements, some of the universities like Tsinghua and Fudan require you to have um, ACT or SAT scores, so that is, or A-level scores. So be sure to have the, uh, the necessary test requirements if you're applying for those programs, or you can apply to other universities that do not require this. Um, if you don't have the necessary required documents, unfortunately, you cannot apply. So please just keep this in mind when you are applying. The next mistake is neglecting your documentation and the authenticity of your documents as well. Um, so please make sure that when you are checking the required documents that you have everything that is necessary. Um, and for example, things like recommendation letters are accurate and complete and properly authenticated. Not all of the documents need to be certified. Um, so it doesn't have to be taken to a Chinese embassy, embassy to be stamped usually. That's only if the university asks you to do so, that you'll be required to do that. But usually a color scan is fine of it. Do not just take a picture on your phone, have it scanned with a scanning machine. Um, this is quite important. And um, just make sure that everything is accurate and that you are not copying anything or forging anything. This will immediately uh, result in rejection for you. Another mistake is the lack of personal statement preparation. Um, so this is quite important when you're applying for a degree program. Your personal statement tells the university who you are, why you want to study in China, why you want to study this program, why you want to study at this university, and why they should choose you. And this is quite important to the university. It does show, um, other than your grades, a good reason why they should choose you. And that should definitely be taken seriously. So while it is not a very difficult um, statement to write, it's not a very difficult document to write, please make sure that it is accurate. Please make sure that it is grammatically correct. And please make sure that it does reflect who you are and that you don't um, send in something that is quite lazy and sloppy and full of grammatical errors. And it needs to be accurate as well. Uh, the correct spacing is important and it can't be too long or too short. If you're applying for a bachelor's program, it should be one page long. If you're applying for a master's or PhD, it should be two pages long. Um, we also offer a personal statement preparation package um, service. So if you are interested in this, please contact us and we can help you with your personal statement preparation. Another mistake is having very limited research on the universities and the program you want to study. This is something that we do notice. We notice that students often do not realize that they are applying for a Chinese taught program and they will have no level of Chinese and they don't know that it's a Chinese taught program. So please do research on the programs that you're trying to apply for. We have all the information on our website, um, the language it's taught in, um, the subjects that will be in the program, and um, if they, it's not there, we can check with the university about it. Um, and everything about the university is there. So please do adequate research to see if this is a good fit for you. There's so many different universities in China. China is a very big country. And depending on where you go 
um, you're going to have a different kind of experience. So just keep in mind your personal preferences. Um, if you're very set on studying in Shanghai or Beijing, make sure you know exactly why. Um, what is your reason for this? And just make sure that it's a good reason um, instead of just going there for the sake of going there. Because uh, personally, it might be uh, better for you to go to a different place or there might be a better faculty for you in a different city. Um, we had a great interview with a student that graduated from Southwest University that did a bachelor's in Chinese language and literature. And she studied in Chongqing, which is definitely not the usual choice for people that are going to study. They usually go to Beijing to study Chinese language and literature, but she had a great experience and she definitely recommends it. So also just check to see um, it does that area really suit you. You're going to be spending a lot of time there. So you want to make sure that you're going to have a nice time. If you hate the cold and you hate snow, then you probably shouldn't move to the north of China to uh, Harbin where it is snowing for a, a big part of the year and where it's much colder than in other parts. Um, I've had classmates, I studied in the south of China where it's very hot and humid. Some people hate it and they move to a different city and they transfer because they can't stand it. I had people in my class that transferred from the north of China because they couldn't stand the cold weather over there. So just also make sure that it's going to be an environment that you actually want to study in. You're going to be there for a long time. So it's good to make sure that you will enjoy your time there. The next mistake is disregarding the visa requirements. So we can't give too much information about applying for visas as it is different for each person and the country that you're applying in. So please check at your visa application center website for your country um, or your Chinese embassy website for your country to check exactly um, what the requirements are for you. But just make sure that you have all the required documents that they have over there and that you apply within the allotted time period period. So um, if you make a mistake with that, unfortunately, the university can't help you that much with it. And we will not be able to as well, as it is your personal responsibility to apply for it. That being said, it's not very difficult to apply for it if you've got all your documents and show up at, at the specific time frame. And then another big mistake is the lack of financial planning. So while you might have applied for a scholarship, maybe you received a partial scholarship, or maybe unfortunately, you didn't receive a scholarship. You need to know how much it's going to cost for you to study in China. You need to keep things in mind that beyond tuition fees and accommodation fees, your living costs and your health care and going out and having doing activities is going to cost you money. Depending on which country you come from, that might be quite low or it might be quite high. For me, it was quite high because I come from South Africa. But for a lot of Europeans and Americans and um, uh, UK citizens, it was extremely cheap. Um, but it might be different depending on where you come from. So make sure that you properly plan for being over there in China. And even if you do get an allotted um, living cost for, with, from your scholarship, it might not be enough to cover everything. So just keep this in mind. Another big mistake is underestimating cultural adaptation. So China has a very unique cultural landscape and depending on which area you're going to be in, the culture is going to be a bit different. The food is going to be a bit different. People are going to speak differently. People might even speak different languages. They might not even be speaking Mandarin all the time. So it's going to be so different depending on where you go and it's going to be very different from your cultural experience. So please be sure to do research on what will be good manners in China and how to respect people over there. And also try to adapt to eating Chinese food. It's going to be a lot easier for you when going out, especially if you're going to be there for a very long time. Uh, it's going to be much cheaper for you as well. Um, being able to embrace the cultural differences and enjoy your time being there. You're not going to be there forever. So make the most of the experience that you have over there. Thank you guys so much for joining today's video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. If you would like to apply, please go to our website, China Admissions and Apply over there, or you can contact us on email at apply at chinaadmissions.com. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.